Hi, I'm Rydian, and today I'm going to be showing you how I data mine Mabinogi's patches. So the first thing you're going to want to have to do is have Mabinogi updated. When Mabinogi is updated, if you go into the actual install directory, you'll find a package folder. Inside this package folder, you'll find a bunch of packs, and these contain all the game's resources. Databases, um, non-background music sounds, graphics, animations, all that sort of stuff. You'll have a full pack, which would be quite large, and a bunch of roll-up packs. The latest at the time of this recording is is 300. Um, if you are watching this video in the future and Mabinogi has changed over to a different format, for example the IT format that Korea currently uses, essentially what you're trying to do is finding the latest added or changed packages and extracting them and searching for differences. Now currently I'm going to be using Mabby Packer in order to extract the packages. Um, in the future, if it's an IT format pack, uh, you will likely have to use a different tool, it depends. Now some of you may ask, do I have to use Mabby Packer? And I'm going to tell you, yes. There are other package tools. For example, Mabby Package Tool is quite popular and it can open packs just fine. Most packs, that is. If you try to open a pack that is very large, it errors out on you, so I don't recommend it. There's also Mabby Unpack, which a lot of people use, and that can open the large packages just fine. However, it does not actually extract certain files, such as the world folder, properly. Years ago, people did not realize this because there were no editors, so people didn't realize it was spitting out corrupt files, but it is. Mabby Packer extracts everything faithfully, so that's what we're going to be using. So first thing we're going to do is go to the Unpack tab and choose our file to unpack. I'm going to scroll down here, and in this case I want the latest. And I've also made a handy folder here to dump it into. So I'm just going to stick that there instead of browsing. Hit Unpack. Confirm it. Wait for it to start. Wait for this process. Now, um... Since I am using a traditional hard drive and not an SSD, OBS may uh, pop up and complain about recording overload because uh, it's kind of stressing my drive right now, dumping 1,145 files. There we go. All right. So now we have a folder that contains the contents of patch 300. We can go in here and we can browse around, and these are the files that were updated or added in patch 300. Now, in order to properly compare things, you will want to have all your previous patches updated. So if you see here, I have an unpacked folder, and that contains everything up through 299, and then this is going to be 300. And then when we get a new patch, I dump 300 into unpacked, and then make a folder for 301, etc. So if you have not done this yet, you'll want to open Mabby Pack and you will want to unpack all of the packs in order. This is a tedious process. Uh, there may be a tool out there to automate it, but if it's not Mavi Packer, you won't get all the files. Anyways, now that this is done, one of the first things we can do is look through this and see which files were added or edited that we don't recognize. So we open the data folder. We can see a couple things in here. This file, features.xml.compiled, and this file, vf.dat, you will find it in almost every patch. If not the compiled, you will find the vf.dat. This file determines which game features, that is, which engine features, have been turned on and off for specific regions. We'll go over that in a minute. vf.dat is the version string. Uh, actually, if we were to edit it with hxd, we will find this is the version string for version revision 300 and NA. If this string does not match what the server has, then it means you're not on the right version and it won't allow you to log in. So if we go here, we can see world updated, and there are some various files in there. Most of the time, these are just, you know, region variations files. Sometimes they're actual map files, but you can't really edit those by hand. Sound, you can sit there and see, oh, wow, look at these sound effects that have been updated. These appear to be for the um, G23 uh, techniques that were added because our 300 added G23. If we look in Material, this is where a lot of things will be. We can find all the textures for the game. These are in DDS, which is Direct Draw Surface Format. This is an industry standard format for once. And I have EarthenView installed and a package, uh, a plugin installed into EarthenView that can look at this and browse. So we can see various game textures interesting. And if you see textures for something that you may want to notice or take note of, what you can do is copy the file name and write it down. So that's what I do. I'll look through these and I'll copy the file names and write them down and be like, I want to look deeper into that. Because I'm like, hey, this seems interesting. Like this camping table seems kind of interesting. Let's copy that file name here. All right. 
let's see so farm uh farm is homestead uh the original text for um what we call homesteads is actually romantic farms is what they call it in korea so sometimes when digging through these files you need to know what the original names of things were for example the german word Arbeit. I don't know how to pronounce it, sorry, but that is the word that a lot of Asians use to describe part-time jobs. So if you see that, that refers to part-time jobs. Let's see, going through materials, monster, which also contains pets. Let's see. See, here's stuff for the axolotls, so we are getting them. See, there's the textures for them. All right, so now, um, yeah, sure, I'll just copy that over. Let's see. Interior, dungeon. Oh, Halloween 2018. All right. Oh, lots of stuff. Okay, so it looks like we're getting a Halloween uh, update. So now I can just like go and add that to the text file. We're getting what looks to be Korea's 2018 Halloween event. It's 2019, but you know, that's how it is. We get stuff later. Let's see. Care for character. Face. Oh, faces. Okay, there's only two new faces, and they look pretty stylized and unique so these are probably just npc faces unfortunately when it's like this when it's a small number and they look unique it, it's probably just for npcs probably not for humans um okay lots of new textures for uh this had the word puppet in it so it's probably a support puppet okay there's lots of new textures for items i don't know let's copy them over look into it later let's see face hair all right whatever <laughs> Um, the define folder is just odd uh, material, XML definitions, not really interesting. All right, then we're going to the local folder. Now we will return to this folder later in WinMerge because local is for localization. This contains all the text in the game. <laughs> well, all the non-server side text. So like NPC text and quests and um, like server messages and stuff are sent from the server, but this is like all the client side text. All the item names, all the UI, the description, stuff like that. Let's see. GFX is graphics. Now, this contains a mix of formats. For example, in character, we'll have various models and animations. For example, human male wear, which is uh, body slot items. We'll find that. Let's see. Human accessories. We will find, okay, so the bishop, knight, and pawn, rook, those are definitely support puppets because they're in the accessory slot. Animations. Yep, okay, so they'll be animated support puppets. Let's see. Character. Chapter 4. A lot of things actually end up in the Chapter 4 folder. I have no idea why the devs have things organized the way they do. Sometimes you just have to accept it. So we'll find a lot more things here. So let's look at mail, where there's a lot more of the outfits. So let's see. Let's just copy these over. Hmm. Change. Change pantless? Okay, sure, we'll go look at that too. Uh, actually, I'll... Ah, uh, sure, whatever. And just keep those lumbled up. Alright. So you'll be able to look up things like wing. Uh, tool is anything held in the hand. So we can see there's bags, then instruments, electric guitars. Then we'll find chest knuckle, chest lance, chest longbow. Okay, so given that there is a chest-themed gacha, this is likely the, um, the files for the weapon skins because that's a thing they've been doing lately. All right, um, item mesh. Okay, so yeah, this is like the wieldable. Monster, animated, axolotl, okay. So there's a bunch of animations for it. Um, attack, friendly, offensive, interesting. Tool, okay, neat. Mesh, axolotl, and manana, that's one of the NPCs from G23. Let's see, pet, mesh, helmet. Okay, this is for animated hairs, I believe, but why they have it in the pet folder i have no idea this is just one of those things you have to accept so that's what's in the character folder all the new models and stuff fx folder is for special effects um sometimes you won't find things that are too interesting because a lot of effects are just really sparkle definitions and stuff sometimes you can go through here and find certain effect names but we're not going to bother 
we go to GUI, that's where a lot of the interesting things are. We can find various UI updates. Now just looking through the folder right here, we can find this is a logo for the title screen. Um, this appears to be a coin collecting event interface. I can tell this because we've had it at least twice in the past, once with chain slash and add a little daily and weekly challenges. All right. Um, no idea what that UI is telling me to left click for. A tiny UI portrait of Askin from Port Cobb, whatever. Okay, so this might be for a little mini game or something. A sliding puzzle, apparently. Spoilers, I guess. And hey, look, these are technique cards. Oh. Yeah, five of them. I heard we'd only be getting two, but apparently all five are being added. It is not unusual. In fact, it is very common for us to get things in the files that we do not have access to yet. So, you know, if you see something, if you see just like a texture for something, don't freak out and think that it's being added to the game. And they'll also add things to the game and not release them for a while. So, you know, don't get too freaked out. Um, don't know why they gave us a new version of the world map. Sometimes they just duplicate the files just in case. I, I mean, it overwrites it. Uh, new second title icons, all right. So these file names would have things for us to look into. So cherry, cotton candy, black hole, all right. Cherry, cotton candy, black hole. Go look into that. Let's see. GUI, map. Okay, so these are the individual mini maps. All right, so that's a new area. Do, 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 do. Login screen. New login screens. It's probably that one. Oh, uh, you may notice that it scrolled. Um, the login screen is still <laughs> kind of in 3D, but it's just a flat plane. So the login background is a texture, and that's why it scrolls, because textures in Mabinogi are, and in most games, are square, but they just have it filled with black. The, the unused space is just filled with black. That's just... That's just how they do things. Collect book is for transformations, so we can see there are some new transformation icons. We zoom in, these look like NPCs, those are the axolotls, and this looks like, these look like some monsters. So if we were to recognize these, like I recognize the axolotls, I can be like, hey, we're getting, we're, we're getting axolotl trends formations at it. Yeah, I'm working with no script. Big whoop, want to fight about it. And apparently some card things, whatever. These are 2016 White Day. Uh, White Day is kind of like a Valentine's Day-ish holiday in Asian countries, and that's where the card flipping matching game came from that was reused in the uh, Sweet Island event, the Candy Island event in the main that's run like two times so far. Alright, whatever. Now, uh, graphics image is where you will find other sorts of UI type things. For example, condition change here, these are all the little status effects icons. See, so farm icons. So these are for, um, these are for uh, homesteads. So apparently homestead chess objects. By the time this video comes out, you'll likely know that. And here we have new hotkeys, new skills. So those are the skills added for the G21 uh, Divinity Transformation. Then we have all the uh, hotkeys they added for the new types of potions. Here we have techs. Here we have even more techniques. All right, one, two, three, yep, five new techniques. Not entirely sure what these are for. Oh, these that was Final Strike. Um, Alchemy Crystal hotkeys, apparently. Uh, looks like new types of potions. That one's got a chain around it. Not sure what these are. Oh, these have the P icon. Okay, that probably stands for pet. These icons are probably from the pet buffing system from Korea. Uh, we are not getting that just yet. We needed an updated icon sprite sheet in order to have all these icons, and so we just got whatever Korea had at the time that our build was made because this stuff does primarily come from Korea. The localization is done in NA, but like the core files mostly come from Korea, so we will often get little snippets at the end of files with Korean things we don't have, we'll, you know, you'll see examples of that when you go through the text. So this does not mean that we're getting the pet things, it just means the icons were added. So like, I'll usually just note that. Uh, NPC, okay, we have more NPC portraits, I will not be looking at them, etc. Hmm. Risk of spoilers, let's look. Yep, looks like spoilers, okay. So etc. this is sometimes used for uh, little pop-up images during generation quests and stuff like that. Uh, it could be used for whatever they feel like. 
page two, inventory. Okay, so these are inventory icons. Let's look at where. And looking at them, you may be like, well, what the hell is this? And that's because the inventory icons are actually split. These individual sections would be uh, tinted with the color of a spot and then overlaid onto each other. So this would be colored and then overlaid onto this, which would be colored and overlaid onto that. And it would do that a couple of times to make the final composite inventory image. So let's just uh, copy that. Let's see. What? Dessert. Whatever. Just, just some file names to look into. All right. Scene. Let's see what this is. Okay, right, these are like actual, PMG is a play own mesh group. That is Mabinogi's crappy custom model format. Um, all right, looks like nothing else is interesting in here. Now we have DB, and this is all the databases for the game. Like the text, we will not be going over that manually. Now what we are going to be doing is looking at which features were turned on and off next. So we're gonna be opening Fetiter, which there will be a link to it in the description. We will open, Oops, let me go over to desktop. Uh, our 300 data, features.xml.compiled. And this will basically unobfuscate it. And we will have the raw XML here. Now the first section here shows which regions are in which version at any given time. So we can see that regular Korea is in G23 season one. Apparently they haven't gotten enough content to make a season two yet. Uh, Generation 23 did come in multiple parts. Uh, the season is not patches specifically. So we can see here that regular USA is also in G23 season one, even though we are behind Korea. Um, Generation uh, updates are generally used for, well, basically generation quests and addition of new systems. Season is used for like rebalances or patches of existing things and stuff like that. So th th these are just a rough guideline. After the settings, oh yeah, and oh yeah, actually I forgot they actually took, <laughs> they took the European lines out of this. They were in it up until like, I don't know, a month ago or something. Uh, rest in peace, EU. Below that we have the features. Now we can see here that there are a lot of features and you can see names for most of them and where they're turned on. So for example, uh, game feature Boss Rust Dungeon was turned on for Generation 5 Season 4 in China and Japan and Korea and Taiwan, but USA didn't get it until Generation 6 Season 5. And you can also see Disable because sometimes it's forcefully disabled for certain regions. Now if you scroll down, you'll notice that there we go, they stop being named. Ones without names are features that are unknown because they are not referenced by name, but they are still used. What you can do is go to edit, update feature names. Let's see, R300, let's not bother searching through that. Okay, so let's have it search through the latest dump and see if it finds any new feature names in any of the XMLs. Okay, one, found two more. Okay, so we'll hit OK. We'll save it, close it, and then I'm not sure if we have to reopen it. I will, just in case. All right, so there are two new feature names that we will now have the text for, and not just the feature. Now, what you can do here is go to File, Save It as an XML, and then you'll get the actual um, XML to look through. So I have them saved over here. I didn't prepare this part ahead of time, my bad. So I have uh, revision 299 features, revision 300 features. I'm, whoops, keep that. Now I'm going to go in Notepad++. I have a plugin installed to compare this. Plugins, compare, set as first to compare. Plugins, compare, compare. You could also compare this with WinMerge, which I'll go over later, but this is just the way I like to do this because this is the only file I want to do manually. And here we can find that there are definite differences. So the yellow lines are lines that have been changed and you'll find like red and green for lines that were subtracted or added. So we can see here that looks like uh, Taiwan and USA went from generation 22 into generation 23. Okay, but what about the later things? Well, we can scroll down or we can use this button to go down to the next entry. All right, so it looks like GF decorative special accessory was only enabled for Korea development, but then went to Korea Live. Okay, interesting. Um, that is the feature for the split glasses and mask and earrings slots that Korea got. So apparently it was in development for gen in Generation 18 and they just kind of left it and then went back to it and turned it on. That doesn't affect us, however. 
Scroll down more. Okay, so whatever that feature is, it's unnamed, was turned on for China. That didn't affect us. So I'm going to go down until I see one that uh, has something to do with the US version. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Okay, there we go here. So GF G23 specialization was turned on for Taiwan and USA. So now anything relying on this feature name or this feature hash will work. So using this, you can look through the various um, features and like XMLs and be like, is that gonna work? Is that being turned on, etc." Close that for now. All right, so that's generally the second thing I would do. Now the third thing I want to do is look up Mappy Data Helper or open Mappy Data Helper. Um, Mappy Data Helper by default is going to whoops that is not oh yeah load pack files uh, by default is going to read from the packages. So even though I have R three hundred unpacked and it's separated from the unpacked folder, this will grab the files from the actual install, make sure your region is set on USA, make sure this is pointing to the right place, hit load data. Sorry if that was a bad explanation, I did not prepare this ahead of time, but hopefully you'll be able to figure it out. Come on. Come on, you can do it. All right, so now we have Mabby Data Helper open and we have a bunch of keywords to look through. So the first tab in Mabby Data Helper is skills. You can find all sorts of skills here. Um, let's see, category name. Are the category names set up for, uh, hold on, what's that? What's one of the skill names? Uh, redoubled offensive. Okay, so category ID 54, so we'll clear search, sort by category ID, scroll down to 54. And let's see how many new skills are in there. There we go. Okay, so it looks like we have Enduring Will, uh, Vital Surge, Dampen Shock, Blunting Field, and yes, techniques are skills, just like actions like Rock Throw and Continent Warp are skills. They're just stuck in a different interface so you don't realize it. <laughs> let's see. Time Warp, Line Assault, Exploit Weakness, there we go. Um, Phantasmal Sight, Fate Weaver, okay, Tenacious Taunt, Zone of Renewal, and Unified Might. So we do have all of the skills added to the game data. Now, since only two of them have been released in this patch, the translations for the others may not be complete and they may be missing little parts of them. However, it looks like these are going to be what they are called, and you can see the stats here. Um, okay, apparently cool time, <laughs> cooldown time is labeled, but none of the others are for this one. Yeah, same with those. Yep, oh well. So now the main thing we want to look for is items. You can search by various things. You can search for the name. For example, holy water. Find all sorts of holy waters. However, we have a bunch of file name keywords to look through. Well, let's try looking through these. So let's search through the inventory icon name, see if we can find anything. Nope, let's search by the mesh name, see if we can find anything. Nope, okay, so we may have to cut out part of it. Something that may have an inventory icon named Chess Throne. Nope, didn't find it. Mesh name, Chess Throne, nope, okay. Try this sort of variation, nope, all right. What about Camping Table? Well, that just means the inventory and mesh are different names than the textures for some reason. Table, nope, inventory, nope. All right, what about Axolotl? Nope, no result. Oh, there we go. Okay, so searching for Axolotl in the mesh name. Okay, so apparently these have been localized instead of being called Axolotls, even though they are clearly Axolotls. It's, it's a type of animal. They are called Far Darig. Some... All right, whatever. That's okay. I'll accept it. So sometimes you just need to search around to find what the hell they've been translated as, and then you can search for it. So now if I search for the item name and I type in far darig, I'll probably find a few more things. Yep, there we go. So now I know what it's actually called. <laughs> what it's actually called. I can look through these. Um, okay, the far darig doll bags. Only one of them appears to have an icon. The other three don't have icons, so this generally means that these are unfinished items. Sometimes you will find references to things that do not show up, and those are unfinished. So we'll probably be getting the doll bags later. I know that the masks are in-game, so we can see that, and you can click this little icon to preview the model of it. Left-click to move, right-click to rotate it, 
There we go. Very nice. Let's see. Um, you cannot preview homestead figures because the model associated with the item is just the drop model. <laughs> because there's no wearable model, the actual prop database is somewhere else. And as of this video, Data Helper does not uh, mess with the, uh, while it does not examine the prop database, maybe sometime in the future. Okay, apparently Fardarg's appreciation box, you can see like the description and stuff. So while the contents of gachapons may be server-sided, so the server decides it, the client does not know what gachapons will give, sometimes you'll find uh, the actual gacha item and you can see the description. So for example, if we look for the description and type in Fardarig, we'll find a few more things. Let's see. Um, okay, what was that? What was the difference? What even showed up? Wasn't even paying attention, et cetera, in Minigem. Okay. So just apparently um, shiny string, smooth bad bag fabric. Okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Used as material for the Far Darik doll bag. So now, according to this I item description, I know that this kind of material is used to make the doll bags, but the fabric doesn't have an icon, neither do the doll bags, so they likely will not be released yet. I would not put it past Nexon to release an item that has no icon. Uh, the icon for the restoration altar did not work <laughs> when, when they released it. They, they, they updated it later that day. Um, so you can see there's many gems for them and everything. Okay, so now we know the axolotl. Chess throne. You know what? Let's just look for the item name chess. Okay. Oh, <laughs> there's chess throne. Okay, so it didn't find it via the texture name. So what is this called internally? Okay, just chess chair. So the texture is chess throne 01, or the, f I forgot what this was, the model name or the texture or something, but the inventory icon is chess underscore chair. That's why I didn't find it. You just have to search all sorts of ways because the same item or the same pet or something could be named six different things. Like, I don't even. All right, so here we have chess throne. Okay, well, this is obviously a, a, a chair because you can see it has the uh, cash chair. Item categories is tags. You can see additional XML variations. So like this, you can just look through, see what the items are and stuff like that. Let's see. So if I were to look up this a Boy Scout, nothing there. What about description? Well, no. Icon name, Boy Scout, there we go. Okay, so Aaron Union Scout. Let's look at the wear, let's look at the outfit, and we can look at the model for it. So this is what the outfit's gonna look like. Um, the model preview just gives it like rudimentary lighting. This is not the exact way it's gonna show up in game. This is just a model preview. So like, if you're trying to use this to preview fashion, kinda don't. Um, newer items specify what their colors are in the XML, but you can change it. So for example, if I wanted it to be, you know, typical giant items green, it would look like that, you know, just your typical eye cancer. If I wanted it to be more of a gray color, you could do that. You could change the various things, maybe get a black pants, whatever. So like this, you can, if items don't have a set colors, you can use this to preview. So this is what I do, and I just resize this window, put it over here, and then I just screenshot this, and I'd be like, all right, so this is one of the new outfits. Thereby, people can see the icon, they can see the description, any stats, which color palettes it uses at which spots, and, you know, what the model looks like in general. Let's see. Chess knuckle, chess lands. All right. Chess knuckle. Nope. Mesh name, maybe? Yep, okay, checkmate pawns knuckle. So if I search for checkmate, I will probably find more. Yep, all right, sorting by one-handed and two-handed, queen staff, pawns knuckle. All right, that's just dumb. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's just dumb. Uh, knight's lance. <sighs> really, did they just, they just reskin and retexture like the lion claw lance and expect us to not realize it? All right. All right, the model itself is different, but still, come on. I mean, I guess it's thematic. Rook's bow, let's see what this looks like. Oh, that's kind of neat. That's kind of neat, it's thematic. King sword. Let's see. Sometimes when looking at models, you'll find like a hand or something, and you may have noticed that there was no head on the male clothing, but sometimes a female clothing will have a head on it or something. It's just, you just, it's just Mabby. You just gotta look at this and be like, ah, it's a wonder this game works half the time.
Uh, chain blades, due to the way chain blades work, uh, the models will often be fully extended like this. It would be hard to get a good shot, but you know, this shows the general look of it. It's not bad, it's, th it's thematic, it's like spades, kind of, maybe. All right, checkmate halos and stuff like that. All right, pretty neat. So you can go through this and there you go, there's all sorts of things. Um, scrolling down, there we go, checkmate melody box. This is uh, probably the gacha. So generally the gachas are in this range and there'll be event cache. So, but with default sorting, they'll be near the bottom of the list and they'll be like box or something. I don't know, you can just like check a few and see. <laughs> and it's like, okay, this is the gacha itself. Open it up for a chance at items like the blah, 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 blah. And of course, reading the description will sometimes find items that you, that will not be in the list because the gacha is going to have items that do not have checkmate in the text. Uh, sometimes a description will have it. Other times you'll have to wait for it to come out and for Nexon to post the actual gacha list. All right. Now we also wanted to look at titles. So let's go over to the titles tab. Um, you cannot currently search by icons. So we can search by cherry and name, see if that shows up. Okay. So we have falling cherry blossom. That's one that already existed. Special cherry delight. Okay. So these, th we, we saw this icon, but there's two of them. Cherry Delight and Special Cherry Delight. Uh, Cherry Delight looks like it's just an event title because it's luck plus 30 and movement speed plus one and like all the event titles have just been a crappy stat boost or just luck. Special Cherry Delight though, wow. That looks like it might come out of a gacha because that's, that's, <laughs> that is very good for a second title at the time of this video. What about Cotton Candy? Okay. Oh, it looks like the same deal. There's Cotton Candy, which is just an event title. Special Cotton Candy, that is a healing title. Let's see, Black Hole. I search Black. No. Hole? No. Okay. So I want to find what the Black Hole title is, but I can't find the name. Hmm. All right. So what I can do is open the folder manually, go to Data, open the Database folder, and the titles are in title.xml. So we can search for black hole. Bam. All right. Okay, so there we go. And we have this title ID 9000, which directly references a uh, second title, GUI title, black hole effect with effect misspelled because this is a dev cat game. But now we can see that it's title ID 9000. So we go here, title ID 9000. And okay, so it's the black hole icon we saw, but it's called a storm surge and Whoa, okay, that's uh, that's that's pretty good for a second title, yeah. All right, so there's another way. We looked through the database and, you know, we cross-reference things. All right, uh, UF where chest, let's go back to items. Was that an inventory name? Yep, checkmate queen's chest. Okay, this one doesn't have set colors, so unless the gacha determines the colors, this is going to come in <laughs> random colors, but the special one comes in fixed colors. That's that's new. So we can see here, okay, that looks that looks all right. That that's neat. It's it's definitely thematic for like I don't know, the collar makes me think of uh the queen from the animated Alice in Wonderland, especially cuz it's kind of chess card themed. See like on her arms, you can actually see uh, various symbols. Those are used in cards, not in chess, but you see the theme they were going for. You know, this may have actually, what's the, okay, now I was about to say this may have been designed as, you know, a card themed thing and NA may have renamed it to chess, but no, it looks like it was designed as chess. Just sometimes that happens. You'll find item renames. All right. So now what about the rest of it? What about all the rest of these databases? What about all the text? Well, that's where win merge comes in. So you run win merge. Then you're going to want to hit open here and you're gonna to want to open files or folders. So for the left, which is the first one, I'm gonna go for the unpacked folder, unpacked data, open that. And then for the right, gonna be 300 data. And yes, 301 hit this morning, but I'm not going through that because that's not interesting. So that's why that was set to 301. So go here, we hit okay. And we wait for it. All right, so this looks through the data folders and it'll give us results. So for example, it finds code, color, locale, and XML. That says left only, which means it's only in the previous version. Uh, we can find the various folders here. And we have vf.dat and features.xml.compiled. And it says that these files are different. Well, yeah. All right, so we're gonna want to go into the local folder first. 
and it says that world.english.txt text files are identical, so we don't need to look at that. We'll go into code. We can see standard.english.txt, the files are identical. Not going to bother to look at it, but skill.english.txt, the text files are different. So we're going to double click it, and we're going to have the old version on the left and the new version on the right. So like it was in Notepad++, we can see uh, various changes. We can actually hit this button here, next difference, to jump to the next difference. So here it looks like in skill.english.txt some new client text was added. You don't have enough phantasmal remnants for this technique. You cannot use that technique right now. Two separate messages. So we know that we are getting some technique with phantasmal remnants. Scroll down, can be crafted using phantasmal site on a blacksmith. <laughs> Manuel. <laughs> oh yeah, hold on, let me just go grab my friend Manuel for this. He's a blacksmith. Uh, that's, a, that's a typo they're going to be fixing later. All right, so obviously that lets us know about some sort of interaction. We can scroll down, we can see various differences. In this case, it looks like almost entirely nothing but additions. Scrolling down, scrolling down. All right, that's it. Then we just close this. All right, let's look up interface.english. We can find more things, uh, area of might, aspect of something. So just various messages for new skills. You can go and examine these and see what's going on. Let's go back up. G23 coin event. Okay, there's a timers with some coin event. But again, by the time this video comes out, you're likely going to know that. <laughs> Tenacious taunt time left, so we know it's timed. So there's all sorts of things you can pick up about how things will work by going through these files. Let's see. Oh, and right up there we had some Korean text added. Again, don't be alarmed when you see that. That is completely normal. There will be untranslated stuff in the game files. Let's see, blah blah blah. All right, client.txt or client.english.txt. You can find stuff. This looks like just Korean stuff, so nothing interesting there. Now, if you go into the XML folder, this is where the majority of the game text is. So you can see that most of them will be identical. Let's see. So title.english.txt, text files are different, so they updated title text. Well, we know that because there are new icons for new second titles. We can go through it anyways. All right, so it looks like there was a typo. First aid skill, they fixed it, put a space and capitalization. Here, the North Main Maha Seal Breaker was accidentally copy-pasted over a copy of the Savior of Erin. Okay, whatever. And down here we have a huge block of new ones, so there's the Eye of the Storm. So if you didn't want to cross-reference which text, like the file name, and go in and look manually, you could have found this, the Eye of the Storm, and then in titles we can look uh, just like Storm, I guess. Let's see. There we go, the Eye of the Storm. Okay, so this is a new primary title. Title given to those who lifted the plague that engulfed Aaron. Okay, so this is probably the new generation title text. So if we were to look at this line down here, uh, generally for titles you will find multiple copies in a row. That's because the system is set up to have a generic title, a male player wearing title, a female player wearing title, and then a default title. I don't know what the technical difference is between the generic and the default, but that's just how the titles are set up. Then you'll have the description, uh, the description and the hint at it, which I don't remember what order it comes in. Like, you can find the references in the database if you really care. Then you can see the list of effects here. But if you look at these effects, and if you were to copy-paste um, various item descriptions and things from the raw files, you'll probably find these cases of backslash n. This means a line break. So you can replace the backslash n's with the line breaks, and you'll find what it looks like, you know, in the actual thing. And then, of course, the text reference. So the Eye of the Storm, the description would look like this. You do notice that the description stats are typed up in text, which is why you cannot always trust what titles and enchants and stuff say in game, because for titles and enchants, the actual stats are typed, which is why there can be inconsistencies. So we can look through this, we can find various things, uh, Storm Surge, Lightning Strike, yeah, we found those. We found Storm Surge, but what about Lightning Strike? Oh, jeez. Okay, 40 MA title, all right. <laughs> okay, sure, <laughs> nice, all right. So you can look through all sorts of things. Um, itemdb.english, yeah, enjoy looking through this because you will often find them stealth ninja fixing typos and things like that that they don't mention anywhere or renaming items and junk. 
In fact, it looks like they are fixing a formatting issue. For Mabinogi, the ampersand used to be an escape code character, and you needed to put in two to have one show up. When the text system was kind of updated a while ago, that was fixed, and so now they're reducing it to one so that they don't have, you know, extraneous ampersands. And we can see here that in revision 300, it looks like bait feeders have been renamed to bait tins. And the wiki people are going to love mass renaming all those pages, let me tell you. Here we can find more instances of it. Yeah, even the normal one. Yep. All right. And it's not just items. You can find descriptions. So it looks like Summer Survival Kit contains all the tools you need to describe uh, survive the scorching heat, or like that. Um, usually, names and descriptions will be kind of next to each other. So for example, this is the name and then this is the description. But sometimes you'll find, let's see if I can find an example. It's just more tin and ten being renamed uh, from feeder. Let's see. Okay, so here we can find an example where there's two item names and then two item descriptions. Actually, there's three item names, special bait tin, extra special bait tin, and then gift box, and then three descriptions, because these two aren't highlighted because they weren't changed. So this is generally how it goes. So sometimes you'll find a block of text, and you'll just have to associate which one is which, or, you know, you can check, you can search by description. For example, search by description for Larry's, we can find Larry special bait tin, extra special bait tin, and gift box, and we can confirm which description goes to which item here if you really need to. All right, here, GM special bait tin, so stuff like that. You can find all sorts of renames and new things. You can find renames in uh, Korean, blah, blah, blah. Let's skip down to here. What's what's this big block of something? Derek coin. And by the descriptions of item text, you can often find a coin made in the image of the far Darig. You can use these coins to purchase various items from G23 Caravan Joe's shop. Well, that right there lets me know that that's going to be part of the event. So, you, you know, I type the event. It looks like you will be able to get coins, blah, blah, blah. All right. And close this. So let's go and look at the last thing, the databases. Is that the last thing? Yeah, it's the last thing. <laughs> Once again, not working off of a script here. All right, so we can see that there are, again, various subfolders. Um, oftentimes, the only one that you really care about is the skill subfolder, because sometimes there will be uh, stealth nerfs or buffs to various skills. So it looks like skillinfo.xml has some changes. However, I can tell you that this is just the addition of big blow balloon, some balloon blowing uh, thing for some event, and then the new the new techniques. Skill level descriptions has all the individual like stats, and you can see side of other side, blah blah blah, solidarity of power, area of regeneration. So these are just the new skills. No stealth buffs or nerfs here. So here you can find uh let's see, title. So let's look at the change titles. We can see a bunch of new titles. So now that we know that these are newly added titles and what their IDs are, we can search them. So let's look up 8049, so the titles tab, title ID 8049. Okay, that's special cherry delight. So it looks like it's going through the numbers. 8050 is cherry delight, 51, 52, 53. Okay, that's one we haven't seen yet. 8053 is the so sweet title. All right, that's pretty good too. That's, that's very good, too. 8054, toothache, okay. Taming success plus 18%, still not enough. Then we're starting at 9,000, because it's not uncommon for them to jump IDs. Storm Surge, 9,001, Lightning Strike, 9,002, okay. So if in Mabby, either in the client or in a file like this, you run into something that does not have text, you will find that it is just a reference. XML title 11132. Um, Data Helper is set up in the same way, but this is what the client does, as I mentioned. So we can see here that there is no name for this, even though it has the parsed effects, so luck 15, and then it looks like there's a visual effect attached to the title. The effect description that would be presented to the user correct or not, would have this. So looking at this, I can see there is a new title. I can say they added some title, luck plus 15 and a special visual effect, but it is it has no text and will not be released. But I'm not even gonna mention this because this is likely some future event title that won't be relevant until the event hits anyways, or it might be something only in Korean if it shows up in Korean text, which some of these do. 
Okay, like 906 there. That's in Korean, has its own icon, and it has its translated thing. So we can see the parsed effect, so we can see what the data is. And if we can say, oh, well, you know, I could run this through Google Translate or something, but, you know, I don't want to. <laughs> Let's see. Production.xml, that's crafting recipes, so there were likely some new ones added. So we can see production ID 24, 20. Are 25, 26, 27. Okay, so let's go to the item crafting tab. Now you can't search in general, it's split up, but we can look at the crafting IDs. So this is 25 through 29. Okay, so these. Really? That didn't make any sense. Didn't we have these? Yeah, we've had these before. Are these like duplicates or something? It's not uncommon for them to have duplicates. Where? Oh, wait, never mind. Weaving. I'm in the wrong tab. I didn't. I didn't realize that the craft IDs would be duplicated across certain things. Yep. There we go. All right. So 25 through 29. Now that I can actually read. Smooth bag fabric. Far dark. Uh, okay. So we will do this with um special with uh this blah blah blah. Sorry, I'm running out of words here. <laughs> so the far dark things will be made with the weaving skill. Um rank novice, <laughs> so you won't need a high rank to do it. Um, looks like decent success rate, 60% at rank 1. Or not. <laughs> That's not very decent. Gonna need a lot of uh, successes to hit 99. Alright, well, whatever. Looking down here, so potion making, 65 and 66. So potion making, sort by ID, 65 and 66. Comprehensive HP 500 and 1000 potions. That's interesting. So let's look them up. Comprehensive HP 500 and 1000 potions. Okay, this potion restores both HP and wounds. Cannot be used while knocked down or unconscious. Overuse may result in medicinal poisoning. Interesting. So I guess they're just adding even bigger potions for us because people have a lot more HP. The fact that they're wound potions has me worried because the new content may wound. But if we go back to item crafting, let's see. Okay, so looking at these, the success rate is zero up through rank one, and then the Dan ranks do have successes. So these are going to be Dan only recipes. Let's see what else we can find. Okay, Handicraft 158. Let's see, sort. Craft 158. Oh! This is new, Perseus Conflict Control Bar, Revenant Lunatic Control Bar. Now here we can see what happens when there's missing data. So you can see this makes a nothing. We do have the item ID, quantity one. Well, what is that? 41480. So let's look at items, search by ID, 41480, no results because there is no item 41480. So this is a crafting recipe that despite being translated and having the recipe data, the item it makes has not been added to the game yet. So I could add a note that the crafting recipes for things have been added, but you know we don't really know what they are. We can see here that um, the icons and stuff it doesn't even show up properly. So we can see that some of it has been added. Vengeance Imbued Old Tree Fragment, that's a new item. I can just uh, search for that text. There we go. Alright, so some of the items are in, <laughs> some of the items are not in properly, and the resulting items themselves are not in. So we only have G23 Part 1 right now, Part 2 will come later. Alright, let's see, anything else? Search for, um, let's see, manual form is also for crafting, however manual form is used sp specifically for blacksmithing and tailoring because those use manuals, so they need additional information on what kind of manual it goes on. Wow, that was a lot of stuff. No way, six, form ID 414, okay, so blacksmith, oh wait, or is that tailoring? Yep, there we go. 414, 414, right? Yes, I can read, sometimes. Sewing pattern, winter messenger outfit. Really now? I didn't even notice this. All right, so we got manuals for the winter messenger things. Interesting, because um, those were from an event. I remember the winter messenger bracelet's actually kind of neat. So you've, there's actually a shortcut to view item stats here. I didn't even realize that. All right, neat. That's that's an older event item, but still, I think this is neat. Fiddling around is how I find things. Um, okay, there are a lot of changes. Let's go to here. What was changed here? So form ID 10102. That's probably blacksmithing. Let's see. 
No. Carpentry, no. Handicraft, no. Is it tailoring? Oh, it is. 10102. All right. Magic's apprentice sewing pattern. Magic school uniform, part time job. Okay, so that's what this is. Let's see what the change is. Uh, okay, it just had description changes. It's kind of unusual, but okay. Looks like a lot. Blacksmithing. Wow. Like everything in blacksmithing change? Let's see, form 20002. Uh, blacksmithing, craft ID 202, blacksmith manual dagger. All right, let's see what changed there. Oh, okay, apply specialization, none. Okay, so apparently there is a new tag added for blacksmithing because like we saw earlier, there's some skill that you can use on a blacksmithing manual. So it looks like the various manuals, some of them may have it that if you use the specialization skill on them, they will transform or change or unlock or something. That's just, you know, that's just a theory you could pick up just by looking at this. If you were to examine other text or, you know, wait for the official um, information from Nexon to be posted somewhere, then, you know, you'd figure it out. But, you know, you want to find things early, you got to dig around and piece things together. Then, finally, we're going to look through ItemDB. It's because you can find all sorts of properties, and this is a huge file. <laughs> there we go, now it's done struggling. So you can find new items. So, for example, 2267. Items, search by ID, 2267, bam. 2267, far dark doll bag, we already know about that stuff. 3982, 3982, NPC, morphides, morphids, face, all right, new gen NPC. Headgear, 4192, 4192. Okay, so new if, war, wearable items. Uh, do note that localized name NPC, it actually will have the word NPC in the name. Generally, if NPC is in the uh, item name, it means it is not available for players. It was created only for the NPC to wear because they have to have the item for the NPC to wear. There is no description, which you know is another good indication that uh, this is not going to be available to players. If they do make it available to players, they will make a separate copy of it available to players at a later time. For example, um, let's see, Bassanio. So we can find here where Bassanio's costume, a costume worn by Bassanio, and that has kind of a, looks like a bit of a cutoff icon in a very simplistic um, description. But if we go to that, we can find, there we go. Yeah, if we go to that, we can find uh, a much more complete version with a much more complete description. So you can see here that these are two separate items and one of them is not for players and one of them is for players. This one actually has like the custom idle motion and stuff. And here we have Bassanio's compass, not to be distributed. So they didn't even make an icon for it, but if we look up the model, we'll probably find, yeah, so that's the compass he was using in that generation quest, whichever one it was. So going by the name and whether there is a description or not, and you know, uh, sometimes a description says not to be distributed, you'll be a, you can more tell which items were added just for like NPC or cutscene use and which items were added for actual players. So by looking through all of this, you can figure out what sort of things will be in the patch, what sort of things are partially complete and maybe upcoming, and what sort of things you have to cry about because DevCat can't code for shit. Have a nice day.